Welcome everybody and thank you for joining the first session of our ICT Tips and Tricks webinar series. This presentation uh, today will last approximately 30 minutes and we will have a 15 minute question and answer segment at the end. You can ask questions at any point via the chat window and uh, any questions we don't get a chance to address live will be answered and made available with the on-demand recording. In addition, there are several supplemental handouts available for download from the handout section of the control panel. Lastly, at the close of the webinar, there will be a very short survey, just one question. Please take the time to respond as it will help us determine which topics to discuss in the future. With that out of the way, we'll begin today with a review of Glass Expansion's high quality line of nebulizers and provide guidance on choosing the best nebulizer to suit your application. In addition to selection, we'll detail nebulizer troubleshooting and proper maintenance procedures. Before concluding, we'll briefly highlight some of our nebulizer accessories, which will improve the performance and lifetime of your nebulizer. Now, without further delay, I will hand the controls off to Ryan. Okay, uh, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as Justin mentioned to you today, we're gonna be focusing on our nebulizer product line. Uh, Glass Expansion is an international supplier and manufacturer with over 30 years of experience in designing and manufacturing ICP, OES, and ICP mess sample introduction components. Our world-class manufacturing and R&D teams have produced many product designs which are considered ICP industry standards. Today we're going to discuss one of these designs in detail, Glass Expansion's Vitricone Nebulizer Construction. As we all know, the nebulizer is a critical component of your ICP sample introduction system, and therefore you need to make the right choice to get the best results out of your instrument. Before we focus on nebulizer selection criteria, such as efficiency and purity and tolerance, let's quickly address the importance of quality. Physical nebulizer design reproducibility saves the analyst time as they never need to re optimize nebulizer parameters when the nebulizer is replaced. Glass Expansion's line of nebulizers follows strict manufacturing guidelines and QC inspection, in addition to careful selection of the raw material, so that each of our nebulizers are manufactured with the highest physical reproducibility. Glass Expansion's innovative nebulizer designs are focused on providing the utmost in performance and long life, reducing the frequency and cost associated with nebulizer replacement. All glass expansion nebulizer designs have been tested with a variety of applications within our own R&D lab, evaluating performance and tolerance. Many glass expansion nebulizer models are also highlighted within several ICP manufacturers technical notes, providing you and your laboratory with the insurance that our recommendation is the best fit for your application. And with our warranty policy, you have our guarantee. Glass Expansion was also awarded a GSA contract in 2019 to help our expand our support to the US government laboratories. Now let's examine the differences in Glass Expansion's nebulizer design. All concentric nebulizers from Glass Expansion feature our vitricone sample channel. Non-glass expansion designs typically use a hand-drawn glass sample capillary. With the hand-drawn sample capillaries, the internal diameter can vary, preventing a laminar nebulizer flow and creating points where particulates may lodge. The glass expansion vitricone sample capillary is ex an entirely different. It's machined from a thick walled glass capillary providing a highly reproducible geometry and con constant internal diameter. From sample inlet to the tip, in combination with our UniFit sample connector, this provides a zero dead volume sample connection. As it is a substantial capillary, the vitricone resists harmonic vibration caused by the high velocity argon gas flows, giving the best short term precision. Again, as we mentioned earlier, the tightest manufacturing to tolerance is possible with this machined vitricone sample capillary ensure consistent analytical performance from one nebulizer to the next, saving the ICP laboratory valuable time. In 2016, Glass Expansion introduced the Direct Connect DC gas line, 
provided an upgrade to our U-Series nebulizer product line with an inert metal-free ICP-specific gas line. The reliable ratchet click and seal fitting to the nebulizer gas arm ensures a leak-free gas connection. By clicking or ratcheting when a proper seal has been achieved and preventing over-tightening, at the other end of our DC gas line is an ICP-specific quick connect to the argon gas supply. This improved gas connection helps to maintain optimal back pressure for consistent day-to-day -day nebulizer performance. With the DC nebulizer product line, we provide an instrument-specific quick connect gas fitting for most ICP models. In the table, you can see a list of the variety style gas connectors that are currently available and provided with each of our nebulizer models specific to that particular part number. Here's an example of our DC sea spray nebulizer installed on an Agilent 5100 ICP OES. The DC gas line replaces the original rigid gas line with a more reliable and flexible gas line. We also found in some cases when an analyst improperly removed these types of rigid gas lines that are standard on some ICP instruments, where they basically just removed the tubing from the ICP quick connect without re properly releasing it, you could be prone to small plastic shavings from the exterior of the gas line ending up in the nebulizer gas orifice. This results in almost all cases of an irreversible blockage, basically rendering your nebulizer useless. So it's a nice feature that the DC gas line also would prevent this. Now that we have introduced our unique design advantages, let's begin the review of Glass Expansion's nebulizer product line. Glass Expansion offers the largest range of concentric nebulizer designs by any manufacturer. Each of our models is ideally suited for a specific application or range of applications. This table, shown here briefly highlights the material tolerance and performance criteria of each of our nebulizer models. When choosing a nebulizer, key selection criteria should include nebulization efficiency, purity, tolerance to hydrofluoric acid, particulates, and total dissolved solids, or we'll refer to as TDS throughout the remainder of this presentation. Nebulization efficiency will affect overall ICP performance for example, sensitivity and precision. Nebulizers are available in different designs. The most popular include concentric, cross-flow, and parallel path, or sometimes called V-groove. The cross-flow and V-groove nebulizer designs typically produce an aerosol that has larger droplets with a wider droplet size distribution. The larger droplets can pass through the plasma without dissolvating or completely evaporating, which can result in poor precision, reduced nebulization efficiency, increased matrix effects, and reduced plasma robustness. Whereas a concentric design produces a smaller, more uniform droplet size, providing higher transport efficiency and improved precision. The trade-off with nebulization efficiency is that the cross-flow and V-groove designs will provide a greater tolerance to particulates. Incomplete sample digestion can result in remaining particulates in the samples. These particulates can then block the smaller capillary and gas annulus of a concentric nebulizer. The raw material of a nebulizer will have an effect on its purity as well as its uh, chemical resistance. Before we review each class expansion nebulizer model, it's important that we understand our nebulizer part numbers as they provide critical nebulizer parameters. Having an understanding of these parameters will also help you to choose the proper nebulizer to match your ICP operating conditions. We already covered the DC gas line. As you can see, the number following the A will inform you the style of gas fitting that's included with a particular glass expansion nebulizer. Typically, ICP OES instruments will run at an optimal nebulizer gas flow close to 0.7 liters per minute whereas ICP mass instruments typically run a bit higher, closer to one liter per minute with regards to the nebulizer gas flow. Glass Expansion manufactures all of our nebulizer models to run optimally at a specific gas flow rate, which is why it's important that you choose the correct nebulizer part number to match this particular operating condition of your instrument. 
The gas flow of a particular glass expansion nebulizer model is indicated by the YY you see in our part number uh, nomenclature. Each of our nebulizer models are also designed for a specific liquid flow rate or a range of liquid flow rates. You do not want to choose a low uptake nebulizer model if you're running your ICP, say, at two mils a minute, as it will degrade the performance and lifetime of that nebulizer. The liquid flow rate of our particular nebulizer model is indicated by the NNN in our part number nomenclature. And as we'll cover in more detail on the further slides, each nebulizer model also has its certain tolerances and is best suited for specific applications. The glass expansion model is indicated by the ZZ in our part number nomenclature. It's also important to note that all of these uptake rates are the nominal self-aspiration rate. It's always good to know that you can always starve a nebulizer with your peristaltic pump. Uh, but as we mentioned, you just want to make sure that you're selecting the nebulizer model for at least close to the highest uptake rate that you're going to be used in your ICP method. Now let's talk about the Micromist nebulizer. Micromist nebulizer is our most popular nebulizer for ICP MS applications. And the standard nebulizer configuration for many ICP MS manufacturers due to its excellent transport efficiency and precision at low flow rates. For example, the 50 microliter per minute micromist has a 50% efficiency, therefore injecting 25 microliters per minute into the plasma. On the other hand, a standard high flow two mil per minute nebulizer has approximately a 2% transport efficiency, resulting in about 40 microliters per minute of sample injected into the plasma. This means the micromist nebulizer can reduce sample consumption by a factor of 40, yet the sensitivity is only reduced by less than a factor of two. So some common applications where the micromist performs well are applications requiring the highest sensitivity and precision, such as toxic metals and cannabis, ICPMS applications where oxide interferences exist, samples with a limited volume, uh, such as those that are difficult to digest or biological samples. Radioactive samples are expensive to dispose of, so you want to produce a minimum amount of waste, again, using a very low flow rate, or volatile organic solvents that would otherwise cause an excessive load or extinguish the plasma. The next nebulizer we'll introduce is our sea spray nebulizer which is the best choice for samples containing a high concentration of dissolved solids. Sea waters, brine, plating baths are just a few examples of sea spray applications. The unique polished tip of the sea spray nebulizer provides a self-washing design, offering the freedom from clogging while nebulizing solutions upward of 20% total dissolved solids, while at the same time providing excellent efficiency for trace level analysis. The sea spray is a standard configuration for many ICP OES instruments due to its well-rounded overall performance. We also offer a low uptake sea spray model for higher matrix ICP MS applications where the micro mist might suffer from salting. The conical nebulizer is glass expansion's high performance general use nebulizer and is ideal for samples containing only a moderate concentration of dissolved salts. A number of instrument manufacturers employ this nebulizer as a part of their basic instrument configuration. It is also a great option for the analysis of clean oil samples without any particulates. The slurry nebulizer excels at exactly what it sounds like, the analysis of slurries. One common slurry application is the analysis of used engine oils for wear metals, and the slurry nebulizer has shown to be an ideal choice. But any sample which consists of small particulates in a liquid matrix is a slurry and would be well suited for this particular model. It's important to note, however, that samples that contain both small particulates and high dissolved solids would not be a good choice for the slurry due to its low tolerance to dissolve solids. The next nebulizer up is our Duramist concentric nebulizer. This is the first 
of our inert nebulizers that we'll introduce. The Duramus is made from peak and is our most economical inert nebulizer for high precision analysis. It's highly sensitive with excellent short-term precision and has the highest tolerance to dissolve solids of any concentric nebulizer. Therefore, it's also a great all-rounder and ideal for high-throughput labs that require a good balance between durability and sensitivity, especially for those labs who aren't interested in using a glass or a quartz nebulizer. Another unique feature of the Dermist is that it can be serviced by us. The capillary insert uh, assembly can actually be replaced at about a third of the cost of a new nebulizer if you experienced a, a blockage that could not be cleaned or removed. The Opal Mist is our concentric nebulizer that is made from ultra high purity PFA and is the choice for high precision analyses and the with the best chemical resistance to hydrofluoric acid, alkalis, and organic. In addition, the high purity PFA construction results in the lowest elemental background, making it ideal for ultra chase ICPMS work. Similar to the Dermist, the capillary insert assembly of the Opal Mist can also be replaced. The Opal Mist is an ideal choice for labs that require increased resistance to caustic sample types and or ultra trace analysis. The last nebulizer that we'll introduce is glass expansion's only non-concentric design. This is the V-spray. It's a V-groove design uh, made from high purity alumina grade ceramic. It's a good choice for analyses that require the greatest resistance to large particulates. As you can see, it can typically pass through up to 300 micron particulates. The aluminum material makes it the most robust and abrasion resistant nebulizer as well. As it's non-concentric though, it is necessary that the sample be delivered by the means of a peristaltic pump. And it typically operates optimally at a higher uptake rate range, uh, somewhere between 1.5 and two and a half mils a minute. What's nice is the V-spray nebulizer is virtually unblockable and is ideal for labs that are we're seeking a robust, but do not need the extreme sensitivity and precision that would be offered by our other inert nebulizers, such as the Duramist or the Opal Mist. Now that we've introduced the glass expansion nebulizer product line, what we're going to do now is we have summarized some easy to follow flow charts, which are guides to organize to help simplify your nebulizer selection. However, if your laboratory has any questions about which nebulizer uh, is best suited for your application, please feel free to contact us at geusa at geicp.com, and we'd be happy to answer your more detailed questions. So this guide, the first one that we're viewing, summarizes various nebulizer recommendations for ICP OES samples that do not contain hydrofluoric acid. It's not recommended that a glass or quartz nebulizer be used with any amount of hydrofluoric acid. As mentioned earlier today, the particular nebulizer selected should also closely match the desired sample uptake rate. Uh, you can visit the glass expansion website, geicp.com, for a complete listing of each of our nebulizer models and the available uptake rates. Another note, for any concentration of total dissolved solids greater than 1%, we recommend the use of an Aragon humidifier for optimum nebulizer performance and long-term stability. The benefit of an Aragon humidifier will be discussed in great detail in an upcoming webinar. So just taking a quick look at these flowcharts, what we did was we tried to organize a, a simple series of uh, questions based upon your sample type, your sample matrix, as well as what your goals or requirements are. Nebulizer selection for ICPMS applications without HF would be slightly different from your ICP OES selection guide, such that we're focusing on the lower uptake models to better match the common liquid flow rate of ICPMS applications being below a mil a minute, and typically or more commonly uh, at a range of about 0.4 mils per minute. With ICP-EMS applications, there's also the question or important question about purity. 
this particular nebulizer parameter typically would not apply to your ICP OAS selection guide because ICP OAS lacks the detection limits of ICPMS which are able to detect these ultra low background levels. With low flow nebulizers, they are also more prone to clogs from particulates and fibers, which is why you see that in some parts of our flow chart, we've also made a suggestion to use our inline particle filter in some cases. Now let's move to our inert uh, nebulizer selection guide. So these are gonna be nebulizers that are not manufactured from glass or quartz because they are unsuitable for, as we mentioned earlier, the ultra trace ICP mass determination of some elements such as silicon, uh, cannot be used with caustic solutions or samples containing hydrofluoric acid. For these types of analyses, an inert nebulizer is your best choice. Now this particular guide simplifies the nebulizer selection process for ICP OES, with samples containing HF. Again, we're using the same basic questions of the previous flow chart. Just now we're arriving at a conclusion of a recommended inert nebulizer for your ICP OAS. Again, this flow chart follows the selection process for your ICPMS instrument with samples containing HF or requirements for an inert nebulizer. It really comes down between the dermis and the opal mist and whether you're after a nebulizer that can tolerate a higher amount of total dissolved solids or you're more pushing towards the highest purity. One note we will uh, draw your attention to is that the dermis does outperform the opal mist with regards to sensitivity and precision parameters. That has a lot to do with the fact that the peak material itself is, is harder uh, raw material compared to the softer PFA. That enables us to machine the dermis to a bit uh, tighter tolerances. It also allows us to polish the tip of the dermis nebulizer, kind of similar way uh, to the unique design of the sea spray nebulizer. And that's where you really get that high tolerance to the total dissolved solid to prevent that salting at the tip of the nebulizer. So now let's move on to proper nebulizer maintenance. With proper nebulizer maintenance, you can really prolong the performance and the lifetime of your investment in this nebulizer. Before we get into the maintenance procedures, let's briefly discuss how or ways that you can identify issues that are specifically related to your nebulizer. This will also help to reduce troubleshooting time on an unrelated ICP OES or ICP MS component uh, with regard to your sample introduction system. A nice feature is that most current ICP uh, instruments have a software feature that allows you to monitor the nebulizer back pressure. It's very good practice to record or take note of the nebulizer back pressure after your instrument has warmed up and where, when you're using a brand new or known clean nebulizer. This way, the analyst can easily identify whether the back pressure is abnormally high or abnormally low. Glass Expansion's direct connect concentric nebulizers run optimally, for example, at 40 PSI. So if you were to observe a low nebulizer back pressure, and a loss in sensitivity, we suggest that you check the nebulizer gas connection at the, at the instrument itself or at the nebulizer gas arm. Other nebulizer models might use a PVC or polymer tube that are uh, often used to supply the gas to the nebulizer. These can harden over time, lose their flexibility or gas tight grip. Even a 1% loss of argon flow can produce changes of several percent with many ICP analytical lines. Not to mention uh, the stability, you know, that you want to maintain a constant nebulizer back pressure in order to see a constant steady signal. If a nebulizer has a high back pressure, you likely have a partially blocked or a clogged nebulizer. In addition to monitoring your nebulizer back pressure, your laboratory can also record your normal sample uptake rate to ensure that you're using the same uptake rate from day to day. A black nebulizer can also be identified by noting a decrease in your sample uptake rate. 
Also, one very common suggestion that we like to uh, provide our analysts or our customers is replace your peristaltic pump tubing on a daily basis. Stopping or rerunning analysis due to worn or dirty pump tubing is not a worthy expense for your laboratory to take on and can be easily eliminated from your troubleshooting steps if pump tubing is replaced on a daily basis, at least the sample and or internal standard pump tubing, because those are critical for the performance of your nebulizer. Now let's review nebulizer maintenance practices that might be common, but you should absolutely avoid. First, do not insert anything through the orifice of your nebulizer. This includes wires or probes. Regardless of who passed this down to you, this is most likely going to cause irreversible damage to the nebulizer. Also, never touch the nebulizer tip. Any deposit of body oils can have a detrimental effect on the nebulization performance. You do not want to use any concentration of hydrofluoric acid to clean a glass or a quartz nebulizer. Even dilute HF can alter the orifice or internal capillary and it's going to slowly deteriorate the performance of that nebulizer. Never place a glass or quartz nebulizer in an ultrasonic bath as it may dislodge the internal capillary. <clears throat> you also do not want to use any type of hot liquid to flush the sample capillary of an inert nebulizer. The temperature uh, can potentially deform the capillary, which again is going to affect its nebulizer performance. So what should you do? Well, number one rule to keep your nebulizer in good condition, we suggest that you always start and finish a run by nebulizing a mildly acidic blank solution, followed by deionized water for several minutes. This helps to ensure that the sample deposits or crystals do not form on the inside of the nebulizer when the solvent dries out, which can deteriorate the performance and shorten the lifetime of your nebulizer. Oftentimes, if you let the acid or samples just run dry in the nebulizer the following day, or at least over time, what will happen is you'll go to start a new analysis. You'll just be running your blank solution, but that material has deposited on the interior walls of the nebulizer and eventually it flakes off and you get a clog. And what will often happen is we'll get a call from a customer and say, I was just nebulizing blank solution. But if you're not following a daily cleaning procedure, eventually you will result in some of that material coming off the nebulizer or the uptake lines and, and plugging the nebulizer. Nebulizing a cleaning solution at the start and end of each day will also help by cleaning out your spray chamber. When you do have a blockage, uh, to safely remove it from a glass expansion nebulizer, we recommend using our very popular LEO nebulizer cleaning tool and following the cleaning procedure below to safely back flush your nebulizer. We have found that using a dilute concentration of Fluca RBS 25, which is a, a laboratory glassware cleaning solution, is the best option. Stubborn clogs, uh, or deposits may require an overnight soak or even an additional step of cleaning with a higher concentration of nitric acid. Methanol can be used as your final step after flushing the nebulizer with DI water to help dry out the nebulizer. Methanol or water alone is not going to be a sufficient cleaning solution, even on a, uh, a daily basis. You want to use some form of a dilute acid or a dilute concentration of a, a glassware cleaner to really clean out that nebulizer. We also have a very informative step-by-step -step video for those of you who would like to learn uh, more about our nebulizer cleaning procedure and LEO nebulizer cleaning tool. I think this video is also a great resource to use as a training guide for all the analysts in the lab. So in the last few slides, uh, we're going to conclude our nebula, uh, our webinar by briefly highlighting some of our nebulizer accessories, which help to improve the performance and lifetime of your nebulizer. As we previously discussed, the first one that I will talk about is our LUO nebulizer cleaning tool. 
which is designed to efficiently deliver a cleaning solution through the nebulizer capillary to dislodge particle buildup and thoroughly clean uh, the gas annulus area of the nebulizer as well. We suggest using the LEO regularly to maintain your nebulizer performance and prolong its life. We currently offer two LEO designs. The only difference between these two models is the actual nebulizer holder. So we have one design for to suit all of our glass concentric nebulizers, the sea spray, conical, micro mist, and slurry. So be part number 70-ELUO. And then we have a LUO for our two inert concentric nebulizers, the opal mist and the dura mist. Uh, as you see, we don't really have a cleaning tool for the V spray. Reason being is that that nebulizer itself is virtually unblockable. So there really is no need to back flush that particular type of nebulizer model. Just a daily uh, rinse of mildly acidic solution is good enough to clean that. Now, if blockages due to particulates are a frequent issue for your laboratory, we recommend that you consider adding our reusable inline filter. Particulates are not always from the samples themselves. Dust particles from the lab environment can end up in the sample tubes. Fibers from leftover from pre-filtering can end up in samples. Um, if a high quality filter is not chosen or if you're not replacing the pre-sample uh, filter on a regular basis, the Guardian inline particle filter provides a simple and effective way to eliminate these common uh, types of blockages in concentric nebulizers. And it is reusable. You can easily clean uh, or back flush the inline filter using our LEO nebulizer cleaning tool and a small little back flushing adapter. Uh, we commonly recommend that the inline filter be put on the auto sampler probe capillary. Uh, that way you're protecting all of the uptake tubing as well as the nebulizer. It also is much more accessible so that you can basically back flush that nebulizer on a daily basis. The inline filter is completely made from peak, so it's uh, very, uh, resistant to a variety of different solvents and acids. And it has a, as I mentioned, a reusable built-in 120 micron filter. The Guardian inline filter protects your nebulizer from blockages due to fibers and particulates, but how do you prevent nebulizer blockages that are caused by the buildup of salt? For any high total dissolved solid, high salt, high acid application, an argon humidifier is an essential accessory. Glass Expansion's Allegra is a compact, cost-effective humidifier design that provides approximately 100% relative humidity to slow the buildup of salt at the tip of your nebulizer. In this particular webinar, we only wanted to briefly introduce the benefits of the Allegra as it is a very popular nebulizer accessory. We are going to cover the performance of the web uh, Allegra in a uh, in much more detail in an upcoming uh, webinar that's focused more on applications. As we as I introduced earlier, uh, we talked briefly about how the sample uptake rate is a critical nebulizer parameter, one that affects both the magnitude and precision of the analytical signal. The true flow allows you to monitor the nebulizer liquid flow rate in real time enabling you to diagnose some of those nebulizer tre troubleshooting steps that we introduced earlier. This particular nebulizer accessory can help you diagnose the issues before an analysis is started and the fidelity of your results is, is jeopardized. The graph shown here demonstrates the application of the alarm limit. So one of the flow rates falls, once the flow rate falls outside of your preset acceptable range, an audible and a visible alarm will occur, alerting the analyst to the problem immediately rather than at the end of the run. Within the Truefo software, the graphic display of our software facilitates other tasks which are often difficult or time consuming. The graph on the left shows the effect of tightening the tension on the peristaltic pump tubing uh, half a turn at a time. You can see that too little tension results in the erratic or pulsing flow, um, and hence 
<clears throat> where too much tension unnecessarily wears the peristaltic pump tubing and just decreases the lifetime of the tubing. With the real-time graphic display, the analyst is always certain that just the right pressure is applied on the peristaltic pump tubing clamp. The graph on the right shows the effect of increasing pump speed versus flow rate. Therefore, there's no need to measure the flow rate based on a formula and the volume of the tubing. Uh, you don't have to use a graduated cylinder and a stopwatch. You can just read the flow rate right off of the display. You can also use this as a, uh, an additional means of quality assurance as the true flow will capture a 24 hour log of your uh, flow rate. So you can use this to basically uh, go back and see if a questionable part of your data or your report was affected by the sample uptake rate. You can also use it as a, an additional assurance step to inform the customer that a flow rate of one mil per minute plus or minus a certain flow rate was maintained throughout the whole analysis. Now the last nebulizer accessory we'd like to discuss or present is our high pressure interface kit, which is compatible with any glass expansion DC nebulizer model. This interface allows for an easy and reliable connection of your HPLC or your IC or your ion chromatography directly to your glass expansion DC nebulizer. As discussed earlier, leaky connections to your nebulizer will affect both the back pressure and stability of the nebulization efficiency, which has detrimental effects on nebulizer performance. Our high pressure interface would provide you with a more secure connection to help prevent these leaks. And that concludes our webinar. I hope that you all found it uh, very informative and useful, and we look forward to answering any questions that you might have. Thanks, Ryan. We do have a few questions here. All right, Ryan, so Joanna would like to know, she currently has uh, her Duramis Neb Flow set to 0.75 liters per minute. Should she change it to the recommended 0.7 liters per minute? Uh, no, not necessarily. So those uh, nebulizer gas flow rates that we put as the optimal or nominal gas flow rates, we always hope that the analyst will go through and optimize the nebulizer conditions to best suit their instrument, but also their sample matrix. So a lot of times you might see that the nebulizer gas flow optimizes at slightly lower or slightly higher than what our recommended nominal flow rate is. As long as you're not using, for example, a 0.7 liter per minute uh, gas flow model and running it at you know 0.9 or one liter per minute that wouldn't really make sense in that particular case you would want to you would want to choose the the higher flow rate model so no i i if if joanne is getting excellent performance at at 0.75 liters per minute argon then that's where her instrument is is happiest with the dermis and where she's getting the best results with those sample matrix Okay, I think you covered this in the talk, but Zhao Zhang wants to know if it's if it's okay to use a standard nebulizer, I assume that means a standard boral silicate nebulizer, if the HF concentration is less than 5%. Less than 5% or like 0.5? Oh. I mean, 5% 5 is a, is a pretty high concentration of hydrofluoric acid. So I would yeah. say, no, you, you, you cannot use a coarser glass nebulizer with anywhere close to 5%. I mean, if you look at some of like the standards that are made by vendors like Inorganic Ventures and you look at the bottle, it might say that there's, in that stock standard, it might say that there's 0.01% hydrofluoric acid in there. That's used to keep the, the, uh, the standard stable in some cases or completely digested right but you're always diluting that standard by by quite a bit so the standards that that have already a very small trace amount of hydrofluoric acid in them those are not 
something that you need to worry about. But if you're prepping and doing a sample digest uh, with that contains any amount of hydrofluoric acid, you you typically you want to use an inert non-glass or non-quartz nebulizer. Otherwise, it's it's just going to degrade and the performance isn't going to last for a long time. Okay, another uh, nebulizer maintenance question. Can can you draw the nebulizer in an oven at around 110 Celsius? Uh, to dry it out, I think that would be okay for a glass nebulizer. I would not recommend that uh, for our inert nebulizers. As I mentioned, even flushing them with uh, hot water uh, can degrade the the capillary itself. We can do a, a follow-up with uh, QC just to confirm that there's no issue with the um, the glass nebulizers, but I don't I don't foresee that would be a problem drying it in the oven. The only thing about drying it in an oven too, you know, if if they're not thoroughly cleaned, you might be further baking that sample remnants on onto the nebulizer. I I think it's an unnecessary step. I think it would be easier to, you know, after you're done following the cleaning procedure, just back flush the nebulizer with some when some methanol alcohol to to help draw dry it out. Uh, is it fine to rinse the sea spray with 10% nitric acid at the end of an ICPMS analysis? Yeah, I just would follow that by a rinse with DI water so that the the actual acid doesn't dry in the nebulizer. I mean, high acid concentration, that's great for, you know, sort of thoroughly cleaning all of your uptake lines, your nebulizer, and your spray chamber. But once you're done with that step, I would follow that up with, with a flush or a rinse of, of DI water for sure. Right, here's another question about the inline filter. If if you're switching between aqueous and organic matrices, uh, can you use the same inline filter, or would that need to be changed as well? I would I would switch it out because that it, it, think about everything else that you're potentially switching out. I mean, I, I would say it it's it's okay if you're if you're also using the same same probe and same uptake lines and same nebulizer and spray chamber. If you're going through the steps of having two different dedicated sample introduction systems for your aqueous and organic samples, then I would have one filter for each. But if you're using the same for both types of samples and you're just doing a, a thorough rinse or washout or flush in between runs, then the inline filter is going to behave in the same way as the rest of your sample introduction components are. All right, let's do uh, one more question live. And just a reminder to everyone, since there are a few more questions here, uh, whatever we don't cover, uh, we will follow up at the close of the webinar with an answer to each, each question that was asked. When working with caustic or corrosive samples, is it recommended to use an inert nebulizer or will a conventional one be fine? Uh, typically, you want to use an inert nebulizer. I mean, again, it would depend upon. I mean, there's really easy. You can you can search like the chemical resistivity of various different materials: quartz, borosilicate, glass, peak, PFA, ceramic, to see how well it will tolerate. But yeah, for the highly corrosive solvents and acids, typically that's where you're going to have to you know, go to like the high purity PFA nebulizer. But again, it would really depend specifically on, on what we're talking about. Okay, thank you, Ryan. And thanks to everybody who attended. Um, please, when you exit the webinar, uh, fill out that survey that I mentioned uh, before the webinar started. Um, and we will have this recording available for on-demand viewing uh, and we'll send a link out later this week. So thanks again, everybody. And thanks again, Ryan. Thank you.